Today we're making a clear pouch to store our sewing patterns. This is a super easy project, perfect for beginners. It's very similar to another project that I have here on how I made the clear pouches, but this one is even easier because it doesn't require a zipper. And you can make it any size you want to fit any of your sewing patterns, whether it's for bags or clothing, big and small. And all you need is one little snap, plus I added a little handle so that you can hang them if you need to anywhere you want. So this will help keep your patterns organized and easy to see because of the clear vinyl. So let's get started. These are the materials. For this size, the 10 and a quarter by 17, we have two pieces of clear vinyl and we have five strips of waterproof canvas. These are one inch wide by about 20 inches long. You just want to make them long enough to cover the longest side of your bag. So if you decide to make these on another and using some other measurements, just make sure you cut enough fabric for all four sides or five. <laughs> okay. This one is the 11 by 15. And for this one, we're using cotton fabric, quilting cotton. And I cut the strips of fabric two inches wide by, I think it was, um, hold on, let me see. Yeah, 17 inches long. What I did, I used a little piece of fat quarter and I um, cut the strips of fabric along the 18 inch side of the fat quarter. Then I took some interfacing and I fused uh, interfacing on the wrong side of the quilting cotton. This, this time I usually use the interfacing from Fabric Wholesale Direct, but this time I actually used um, Pilon Sheer Weight. And what I did is that I took three of these uh, strips of fabric and I joined them uh, along one edge using a quarter inch seam allowance and I made a long strip. Then I have two other strips of fabric separate. These two I'm not going to join, okay? And I'm, get, I'm using polyester thread for both top and bobbin thread. And for this, I am not going to need a Teflon foot. My regular foot will work because you will be stitching along the fabric the entire time. So you should be okay. You will need some sort of iron. This one is not hot just yet, but something to press because we are going to be folding these and I, you know, you want to press them and keep them folded nicely. When I fold the cotton uh, to make binding, I love using starch. It just helps keep the fabric in place. It doesn't move. It looks nice and crisp. So this is optional, but that's what I use. I use starch for this process. You will need your pins, always a lot of pins to keep everything in place. Now to cut the fat, to cut the vinyl, I have a video right here that you can see where I show you tips on how to cut the vinyl. 
And lastly, I always keep my double-sided tape handy because I never know when I'm going to need it. It may come handy to, uh, you know, join the binding or keep the fat, keep the two pieces of vinyl together. You just never know. So it's very handy. We may or may not use it today. And I also have this template that I uh, watched a video. I'll link the video down in the description from um, the person who made this video. I can't remember right now, but her name, uh, what her name is, but um, it's the a quilting video. Uh, she has a quilting channel and she made this template for the 45 degree angle binding. So I made one and so I'll link it in the description and it'll, it will say template and then the link, okay? And before we start, just wanna let you know, I did not cut this on bias. I cut the strips of fabric on grain. The bias is not necessary because we're not going to be folding the, uh, the fabric along a curve. This is uh, straight lines. But if you have some bias tape around the house, then use that. That's the beauty of this project. This project really you can use with some scrap of fabrics, a little bit of bias that you may have left over from another project. And so it, it will, that will work as well. Okay, so let's get started. I do iron the waterproof canvas a little bit when I am making these bindings. And only because I want to make, make sure I have a marked, a clear marked crease on my waterproof canvas. So the way I do is that I find the fabric and I find the side that you can see the fabric here. You see the fabric on one side and then you can see the PVC coating on this side. This is the plastic. When this melts, it is plastic. So if you join these together and you iron it like this, it will be stuck. It's not going to open up. It's, it's going to glue together, okay? But if you just apply a little bit of heat, it will be fine. So I just hold it like this and carefully, you see how now it has the crease. So I like to press it, you know, a little bit more um, just enough so that it just doesn't open up easily because if it has the marked crease there, it will be so much easier for you to handle when you are adding the binding to uh, the clear vinyl, believe me. So you want that, you want that crease there. Just hold it for a few seconds, three, four seconds, and there. There it is. Now it's not opening up, like flat. It, it's opening, but it's staying in shape. Now it's going to be super easy to attach this binding to the clear vinyl. Now continue to do that for all five strips of fabric, okay? So here are my two pieces of clear vinyl. This is the 10 and a quarter by 17 
piece. Yes. I'm going to keep both pieces together, but before I do that, uh, you're going to choose one of the short sides. It doesn't matter which one. Okay. So one, one, one of the 10 and a quarter side. And you're going to add a piece of binding. And for this one, we're going to use the waterproof canvas. So you're going to only on one side of each clear vinyl. So here, um, here's the edge of my clear vinyl right here. And I'm just going to put the edge of my waterproof canvas and I'm going to clip it in place. And I'm going to do the same with the other side. Okay. So you have your two pieces right there. And that's how uh, it's going to be. Now we're going to take this, going to trim them. And get the scissors. And just trim it right at the edge of the vinyl. Okay and take them to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch it along the edge, the bottom edge at one eighth of an inch seam allowance, four millimeter stitch length because this is clear vinyl and we don't want to uh, puncture the vinyl too close to each other or it will uh, damage it and it will tear apart like a piece of paper. We're going to take the pieces of the two pieces of vinyl and I'm going to match here the top edge. Make sure they're straight and aligned. And I'm just going to put a couple of clips to make sure it doesn't slide around and move around. I'm going to take the three long pieces of waterproof canvas that I had already cut right and uh, and press these are not joined by the seam so i don't have a, a seam these because it's waterproof canvas the rolls can um so because this is waterproof canvas it's not going to fray so i'm okay with leaving the raw edges unfinished so that's why i did not join them like this and join them by the seam like I did with the uh, fabric. We're going to take one of the pieces and I'm going to take that edge, that one of the edges, and I'm going to align it to the edge here of the back where the two pieces of uh, binding and opening is. And I am going to put a clip in there. I'm going to do the same along the side, making sure the two pieces of vinyl are inside the binding like this. Okay. When I get to the bottom, if you have leftover uh, binding, you can fold it so that it, um, it continues. So what you do is that you fold it and align the bottom edge of your vinyl 
to the crease inside the binding and then you can fold this it will automatically fold for you and create a, a corner there the fabric will give in and create a, like a 45 degree angle so I'm just going to put a clip there and continue now I am going to grab another piece of binding and I'm just going to overlap it right here at the ending okay and continue and at this point you can do the same thing just fold it like this and your fabric will automatically it will just give in now I'm going to take the other binding and as you can see it's pretty long so I'm just going to overlap one on top of the other and I'm going to continue if the binding was short enough and it ended here I could trim it off and it will look just the way it does on this side okay and that is perfectly fine however because it's, it's pretty long and I hate to waste material I am going to continue I'm gonna leave it like that and then I am going to continue stitching it and then I'm going to fold it here and add a snap and make a little handle for it. Now this handle is very long, so I don't think I'm gonna do it that long. I think I'm going to measure about, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine inches eight to nine inches. I think that's plenty. Then I can just fold it in half, add a snap there, and that gives it a little handle in case you need to, you know, hang this on a hook or a closet. When you start sewing, start at the side where the binding is open, okay? So you're gonna start on the inner side of your binding. You're gonna go around the back. You're going to turn on this edge and then you're going to stitch the outer side of the binding until you reach this point again. So let's go ahead and do that. At one eighth of an inch seam allowance, four millimeter stitch length. Consider liking this video and subscribing to this channel if you have learned something today. Okay, perfect. So now we're going to create the binding for the fabric, for the bag that we're going to use the fabric. And for that, all I do is, at first, I'm going to use my uh, heavy starch. Again, this is optional, but I really like it. And so I use it a lot and just, you know, spray some in there. This is the strip of fabric that has all three of them attached. And then here's the other two. I'll just spray it like that. Okay. For this one, since I already joined it, I'm going to open the seam here. 
a little bit, okay? So I take my fat, my hot iron and I just, I'm going to open the seam. That will help it but make it easier to fold when it's time to make the binding. So it's two, two seams only. Okay. Now, we're going to create the center crease by folding your binding in half, wrong sides together. Okay. Now we're going to open it and you see you clearly can see the crease there. Now you're going to fold one of the long edges towards the center crease. Now I kind of finger press it a little bit to help it stay in place. Now you can do, what you can do is that you can continue all along pressing right like this, one side of the binding and then folding the other side and press toward, do the same thing and press it towards the center so that the two edges meet right there at the center. Now, you can do one side and then do the other side, but if you're a little more expert, you can do uh, both sides at the same time. It's, it's really up to, what, up to you, whatever is easier. I can tell you that because the fabric is starched, it has, you know, that starch in it, it's easier to handle. So if I fold this side and then I fold this side and I finger press it a little bit, see how it stays in place. So it's easier for me to hold it in place and then just press it with the iron. Okay, once you've done that, now you're going to fold it again, one more time. Look how stiff it is. See, this makes it so much easier to work. Now take the other set of clear vinyl. This is the 11 by 15 one. And you're going to take your fabric, the binding that you made with your fabric and pick one side of one of the pieces of vinyl and one side on the other one, the small side, the 11 inch side. And you're going to place your binding along that edge. Now your binding is raw like this. See the, the raw edge? That it's okay because it's going to get covered with the other binding. Okay. And now we're going to take this to the sewing machine and you're going to stitch it along the bottom edge here of the binding. And you're going to use a uh, one eighth of an inch seam allowance four millimeter stitch length. Now let's join the binding to the sides. For, I keep the pieces together using clips and I match the edges here where uh, my binding is attached just to make sure that it doesn't slide around uh, and moves out of shape, out of place. 
moves out of place because I'm going to add, you know, the snaps here. So I want to make sure this is straight enough. And then I'm going to take my binding and add it to the three corners. As you can see, this is a raw edge, right, for this fabric. So what I did is that I folded down my the, uh, the edge in by like almost an inch, like maybe three quarters of an inch. But before I did that, I took this and I trimmed it a little bit, like a, a 45 degree angle, diagonal like that. That helps reduce the bulkiness. So when I fold this in, and then I fold it again and again and again, it doesn't feel as bulky here in the in the fold, okay? Because that will be, I mean, eight layers of fabric is gonna be too much. When I add it here to my bag, I make sure I trim off any excess fabric or vinyl that may be uneven. And then I start placing my binding along one of the top edges here. And you can match your top edge with your binding fold here like this. Okay, and it will be fine. You can just start like that, start like that, and you can just start placing your binding along the sides. However, this is very bulky as well. So if you want, and if your machine doesn't allow for bulkiness like that, you can always push your binding up a little. and just like that that and then you you can stitch it there and that way all that fold is not on top of these two pieces of vinyl with binding as well um it's just a tip to help in case you know it, it's really bulky uh, and it could be a little bit difficult for the machine now i start at adding my binding along the sides here, right? As you can see, I reach my first corner. I am going to take that corner and I'm just going to press your fingers here right at the very edge and then move your binding along the bottom edge and it will automatically create that square shape for your corner and just make sure you put a clip in there. So then you continue to add your binding on the, the bottom of your bag, just like you were doing before. Again, we reached the corner and when you reach the corner here, if you just keep your finger very close to the edge, you can just move it like this and move your fabric around and continue. If you decide to use this, all you have to do is place it right there along the edge, same way, and then just place your fabric over the template, remove the template, and there it is. A beautiful corner. And I just add a clip in there and continue. If you have leftover binding like I do this, you can do the same thing, fold it by about half an inch or more, okay? And you can stitch it all the way 
around here and then we can just add a snap here and then this you can hang it if you need to hang it somewhere um, it's you know it creates a little handle so that is an option or you can just trim it by about an inch fold it in and do the same thing that you did here now I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch it beginning on either end I'm I'm going to start here I'm going to stitch on the inside of the binding going around then I'm going to go and go straight here turn and then stitch on the outer side of the binding and that's it and I'm going to stitch it at a uh, four millimeter stitch length and it's going to be one eighth of an inch seam allowance on each side of the binding so at the beginning of the video I said I was going to use the plastic snaps but as I tried using them they really did not work out the way I wanted to uh, the way I thought they were I think it's because the material here is too thick the vinyl um, plus the waterproof canvas so they really didn't work for this project so I ended up using my one and only faithful cam snaps now I have a video here that you can see where I show you exactly how to install fashion metal snaps using your cam snaps with all the dies you can check it out next but here it is the final product the final bag with the snap in the center and the snap here for the handle I hope you enjoy it and you can use this for many 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 projects now go check out my next video ciao